Listen to some of the best in modern audio drama right here on the Mutual Audio Network. The following audio drama is rated PG for parental guidance recommended. Welcome aboard, Chronosphere passengers. Before we dive back into the Generation Z Bubbleverse, I'll let you know that this week we'll be preparing Daniel Dread Episode 5 and the first episode of Port Lock. Now, as we pull out of the spectral streams, prepare to hear Part 3 of 4 of the Generation Z season finale, The Summit. Dead Zone 6, Porterville, the local jail. Nick paces the cell impatiently. Seriously, aren't you, like, supposed to get a phone call when you get arrested? Nick, you know the mayor said he doesn't want us talking to anyone, telling them what happened. Yeah, because then we might actually, you know, help people, put a stop to what's going on. I think the guy's just trying to cover his ass. He should have known about this a long time ago, and he should have done something about it. Sam, how are you holding up? Okay, I guess, considering everything. I think maybe once they transfer us to the zonal capital, they'll take us more seriously. And maybe they won't treat us like prisoners. They're not going to let us go. It'll be a long, long time before they let us go free, if they ever do. What makes you say that? They don't trust me. Why should they? I'm, I'm alive. You're alive, but you're not like the rest of the living. Uh, no offense. None taken. Maybe, but they know I was in the lifeguard. And you left. You didn't just leave. You betrayed them saving zombies and risking your life doing it. Nick's right. You're a hero. I'm not. Sure you are. Don't call me that. Why not, sweetie? I don't think it makes you a hero doing the right thing. Just human, whether you're alive or not. Well, I guess there aren't too many humans left then. Yeah, which is why we're probably out of luck. Nick, what do you know about in Bombersfield, about the governor? Not much. I haven't spent a lot of time in DZ6. I don't really follow the politics. Oh. But there's no way the governor's as big a dick as the mayor, right? I don't know. You remember what he said about the summit? What if they ignore what we say just so there aren't any problems at the summit? What's the point of a summit if they just pretend like there's nothing wrong? I don't know what kind of stuff they're talking about over there, but maybe it's just, you know, more important than this. What could be more important than what we've got to tell them? I don't know. Besides, they can't just keep this a secret forever. Why not? It's been a secret for this long, and like the sheriff said, it's been happening for a long time. Okay. Okay, yeah, but they can't keep us quiet about it. Yes, they can. They just have to keep us locked up. They they wouldn't do that. We'll see. Looks like that's their plan for now. Guys, hey, let's not lose heart. We're here, we're together. I think things are going to be all right. I think the worst is past, really. (sighs) I miss my dad and my brother. I wonder what they think happened to me. You'll see them soon enough. Do you think George is all right? I'm sure of it. He's strong. He's always been able to handle himself. I just hope the lifeguard didn't think he had anything to do with, well, us. Hey, Sam. Yeah? What happened to your dad? Uh, I mean, if you don't mind my... It's okay. But um, I really don't know a whole lot about what happened to him. Just that he's gone. I... I didn't want to tell you because you were so young at the time and I... I suppose I just never got around to it. Yeah, there's a lot you never told me. I know. I'm sorry. I just, I didn't want you to have to grow up in the same kind of world I did. I wanted to, to shield you. Obviously, it didn't work. 
look where we are now. I guess the world hasn't changed much. So what happened to dad? He, he was a lieutenant in the lifeguard. Before you were born, he served a tour of duty overseas with the expeditionary force. He was a war hero. It looked like he was going to be selected to command the local chapter, the one you served in, Sam. But then the skirmishes in Living Zone 3 began. I remember that. The lifeguard kept invading Dead Zone 4 all along the inner zonal line, stealing supplies, killing civilians, and then going back to the Living Zone. It's crazy we didn't go to war with the living then. Well, it was certainly a war up there. Volunteers from all over the ULZ traveled there to join Colonel Buford after the zombies occupied the border cities. Your father was one of them, Sam. I pleaded with him to stay with us in Living Zone 4. George was 13 and you were only three, but he said he had to go. He had to fight for the cause, and he died for it. He was infected by the zombies in battle, and then he chose immolation. What? He set himself on fire. He chose to come home a pile of ashes, then be a zombie and never come home. Oh. Things were tough after that. Do you remember him, Sam? No, not really. He loved you very much. You were his pride and joy. Leaving you behind wasn't easy for him. Do you think he'd still be proud? Yes, I do. I think he is. Somewhere. Hmm. What happened to your mom, Nick? Oh, uh, she, uh, left. Left? Yeah, she walked out on us about a hundred years ago or so. When my dad and my brother and I became zombies, she didn't want to be one. So she just left, went to the living zones. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's awful. <sighs> it's fine. I've had plenty of time to get over it. Oh, I guess that's true. I keep forgetting how, how long you've been around. Yeah. You'll be around for a while too, you know. I wouldn't count on it. Leanne, what are you doing here? What am I doing here? I'm here for you. And boy, is Captain Roberts going to be happy to see you again. What? Wait, Leanne, are, are, are you? Yes, I'm a corpse now. And it's all your fucking fault. You, you... I got infected after you let them out. You killed me, you little bitch. And I'm really going to enjoy watching them kill you. All of you. Leanne! Shut up! You're... You're going to take us back to the living zone? You're not taking them anywhere. And what are you going to do with that? I'm one of you. You can't kill me. You want to walk around with a gaping hole in your face for the rest of your days? I've met a few folks like that. It's no fun. Now drop the weapon. <sighs> now get in that cell there. Go. Now shut it. Who are you? Go fuck yourself. She's in the lifeguard. A lifeguard? What is it you want here? She wanted to bring us back to them, I bet. Is that true? <laughs> what? What the hell's so funny? I don't have to bring them to the lifeguard. The lifeguard is coming to them. What? They're here! Jesus. <laughs> You're all so fucked. Come on, we're getting out of here right now. It's too late. Let's go, quick. No time to explain. Just follow me. Into the truck, come on. Looks like I'll be escorting you to the governor myself. You'd better buckle up. Meanwhile, a mere block away. Really? You couldn't give me more than just a few hours' notice? This is not how you treat a friend, Roberts. I barely had the time to notify our comrades in arms. Most of them are out west rounding up zombies. But you did have time. And their contribution to the battle is greatly appreciated. Not that it's needed. Of course not. The town's yours for the taking. As it's always been. You knew it was going to happen someday. Well, I didn't imagine it would be today. I hope you know what you're doing, Roberts. You picked quite the I know time. what I'm doing, Schumacher. 
Don't question me. Uh, of course. I didn't mean to. Action was imminent. Circumstances require it. You said you have Samantha and her companions? Yes, yes. At the jail. I already sent your scout over there to secure them. Let's go pay her a visit, shall we? Lead the way, Mayor. This way. Why didn't you inform us that they were in your custody sooner? You weren't trying to spare your little city, were you? Oh, nonsense. I wanted to confer with you, but you aren't exactly readily available. There wasn't a scheduled rendezvous in the living zone for another week, and whenever I send an emissary your way unscheduled, they usually don't make it past your dim-witted patrols. Obviously, I was going to keep them locked up for you. I'm sure. Corporal. Yes, sir. You remember I asked you once if you would pull the trigger yourself? Yes, sir. Today, you'll get your chance. To prove once and for all where your loyalties lie, I know you'll do the right thing. Absolutely, sir. I suppose if anyone is to blame for the war to come, it's your sister. Sister? So that's your mother she's with? So it seems that we were right about your mother, Cooper. The whole family of traitors. Ah, except for the favorite son. He'll purge the traitors from his bloodline. Both of them. Wait a minute. War? Why should a single raid set off a war? The Consul even now is hosting President Knox and LZ-1. They won't let this stop them from maintaining the peace. This is more than a raid, Schumacher. We're expecting reinforcements from Colonel Pierce and Major Kurtz in the next day. At which point we march on the zone capital. Embalmer's field? You're staging an all-out offensive on DZ-6 just because of that girl's defection? No. This is about so much more than that. This is about winning the war that's been raging for 100 years since your kind seized control of the country, of the whole godforsaken planet. And the living are going to win that war at any cost. We must. If the Consul won't start a new interzonal war, then I will. Or die trying. Very well. You're going to recall our collaborators currently making their rounds. We're going to need them for the attack on the capital. I will. You expect the consulate to take your side? I not only expect it, I am entitled to it. To their unequivocal, full-throated endorsement. And if the consul or the consulate or the lifeguard give a damn, if they haven't rolled over already, then they'll join the fight. They'll rejoice at the opportunity. This is our destiny. Hear, hear. You know I'll do everything I can to help. It's my cause also. I know. Here we are, the jail. What about the sheriff? One of ours? No, unfortunately. He's, shall we say, the virtuous type. Wouldn't have been safe to approach him with an offer. But he should be out. I arranged for a false 911 call to draw him away. Perhaps the consul would appreciate the gift of Samantha's head. What do you think, George? The decision is yours, sir. What the? What the hell is this? Hello, sir. Where are they? Where have they gone? I don't know. What happened here? The sheriff snuck up on me, forced me into this cell. The sheriff? <sighs> Schumacher. Where did they go, soldier? Where did they go? He got them out. Didn't say where he was taking them. I thought you would have been here a bit sooner. When did they? Just a few minutes ago. Lieutenant, they must be pursued. Have all the buildings searched and send out a few parties of troops in every direction. I want them found. Yes, sir. Right away. Captain, I don't know... I'll deal with you later. For now, Leanne. Yes, sir? You failed. You failed the lifeguard and you failed me. Again. You let them get away. Guess I did. Weren't you armed? Yeah, the sheriff snuck up on me. Had a gun to my head. And? You're a deadite. You'd have survived. What do you have to say for yourself? Didn't want a big hole in my head. That simple. You didn't, huh? Sir, do you... Consider that your dishonorable discharge. Fuck off, sir. Your usefulness is at an end. You're finished. I sentence you to die. I couldn't ask for any more. Corporal. Yes, sir. Your sister and your mother and their friends have evaded us. For now. Unfortunately, you may not have the chance to kill them today, but fear not. I'm charging you with Leanne's execution. You'll need a flamethrower or some gasoline. 
Go get them and get to it immediately. Do your duty. We are at war now. The time for mercy is past. Is that understood? Yes, sir. It is, sir. Good. Report back to me once it's done. Now, if you'll excuse me. Of course, sir. Why don't we pay a visit to City Hall, Schumacher? We have some things to discuss. Certainly. Come with me. George? Yes? Do it. Please. Living Zone One. A crisis room in the consular capital. Megan! Where's Megan? Where is she? Lars is fetching her as we speak. I believe she was out at the munitions plant collecting the most recent numbers on the distribution of gas canisters. We need her here now. The situation is dire. This threatens to undo years of meticulous planning to sabotage all our efforts. Sir, General Wilkes just arrived. General, what in God's name is going on? What do we know about this rogue lifeguard unit? Sir, apparently it's a company of several hundred men and women under Captain Richard Roberts in LZ-4. One of the westernmost units of the ULZ. And why have they done this? They couldn't wait another week? Didn't they receive their orders? It appears not. And why is that, General? Sir, they were stationed in the wilderness, in the mountains. Our courier might have met with an accident, might have been delayed. Given their geographic position, they would have been uh, among the last units in the country to receive their orders regardless. In fact, our orders might have missed them by just a day or two. If we had taken other means to communicate their... I stand by my decision. Anything else, a radio transmission, a phone call, we would have risked interception. But to dispatch your orders so late, weeks from the invasion... It's simple, Wilkes. Minimize the window during which there might be any leaks, any hint of our actions that might find its way to the UDZ. Well, it's... I will not explain myself any further, and you are in no position to question me, General. I am the Consul, and I am Commander-in-Chief of the Lifeguard. Of course, sir. This is my plan. The hopes of millions of people, of our very posterity, depend on its success. And now everything is jeopardized at the last minute by our own troops, by their petty impatience. You assured me, General, many months ago that the lifeguard was loyal to the consular government, that the chances of units acting on their own initiative were slim. They were slim, but they weren't nothing. Furthermore, It was the larger units. I personally vetted the divisions, the brigades, the battalions. I couldn't have possibly examined every platoon, sir. But I assure you, virtually the whole of the lifeguard is firmly under your command, ready to carry out your orders. (laughs) Virtually? General Wilkes, just what portion of our forces have received their orders? Nearly every unit in the 120th Meridian West has confirmed. Roughly 93% of our total numbers. And the rest? They should be getting their orders within the next two days. I meant, and we trust the rest not to mutiny. Yes, sir. I expect so. And it's not exactly mutiny. It is mutiny. They may be out there killing zombies, but they are acting without authorization, flouting their duty. It's insubordination. They may as well be openly rebelling against us. They're undermining our government. Boss, got Megan here. (sighs) Sorry I'm late. It's fine. General Wilkes was just bringing me up to speed on our troops. Lars, go keep an ear out for any developments with the situation in DZ-6 and DZ-1. You got it. Where do we stand with shipments of the gas canisters? Everything on schedule. I'd say 75% of intended lifeguard units are equipped, and the other shipments are in transit. So they should all have arrived by next Wednesday on schedule. Unfortunately, our schedule is now in grave peril, thanks to this Roberts character and his itchy trigger finger. Still, in military terms, we're far more prepared than our undead counterparts. We would have been if the element of surprise hadn't been so wantonly squandered. 
If we have to fight a defensive war, we'll be facing circumstances we didn't plan for. It'll be far more costly and far more risky. We should move up the launch of the offensive immediately before the UDC can respond to Robert's raid. Perhaps that's not necessary. Our government didn't order this raid. We have deniability, as we always have. It's yet to be seen how the UDZ will respond to this isolated incident, but if we can frame it as just that, we may be able to keep them at bay, at least until our preparations are complete. What do you mean? I mean, there's no need to dispense with the schedule just yet. We've played DZ-1 like a fiddle thus far. Why stop now? You think we can simply absolve ourselves of Robert's actions? The UDZs look the other way in the case of countless minor incursions, most of which we didn't order. This isn't any different. It's just bad timing. But with Knox here, it'll make them uneasy. Maybe so, but they've kept the peace up to this point. We just need another week of inaction from them. Hmm. What were the latest communications between Knox and DZ-1? Yesterday, he informed them of a slight delay in his projected return, in light of our unforeseen maneuvering. Did he say when exactly he'd return? No, just that he'd need several more days than anticipated. And he was vague about your change of stance. It sounded as though he was thoroughly embarrassed he'd been had. He didn't want to let on. Perfect. I'd assume that communications between his delegation and the capital have been suspended since we learned of this incident? Of course, sir. Knox hasn't caught one of it. But DZ-1 is desperately trying to reach him and is demanding a formal explanation from us about the incursion. Hmm. We just might be able to work around this setback after all. But we'll have to tread lightly. Tell DZ-1 that... Sorry for interrupting, guys, but this is urgent. Lifeguard Command Headquarters just received a coded message. A message? From Porterville. Read it. At once. Your consulship. I present you with a gift. Porterville. Subjugated. The first of many prizes in the war to come. Soon all of DZ-6 will be yours, but I'll need your help to keep it. Give the lifeguard a chance to fight, and we'll make you proud and reclaim the domain of the living. We will restore our people to the rightful seat of power and to the height of prestige we enjoyed a century ago. Your people have been waiting for long enough. Lead and we'll follow. Long live the ULZ, Captain Roberts. Christ! He's going to march on the embalmer's field? He wants a general conflict. The fool, he's trying to start the war that was already coming. (sighs) He'd have an easier time if he waited for the gas. Well, what's to be done about this? I'm considering. Say the word and I can launch every available unit before the end of the day. We still catch them off guard, but we can't hesitate. The Western Front would start off with a distinct disadvantage if we moved up the opening offensive before those munition shipments arrive. I mean, we worked too hard preparing for this to let some rogue captain disrupt our time frame and give us orders. We keep to our schedule. Dr. Megan, what is the westernmost unit already equipped with Schneider's gas, the nearest to DZ-6? I believe that would be General McCormick's division in LZ-11. We'll assure the UDZ that we're sending McCormick to DZ-6 to defend Embalmer's Field, to crush Robert's company. For what? To reinforce him, of course. You're giving Roberts what he wants. For the time being. What's most important is that we finish our preparations and we keep the UDC's trust. At least for another week or so. And what about Knox? Well, we can't have him conferring with DZ-1, ordering any kind of response to Porterville. We're going to have to move up his arrest. To when? Now. Lars, make it happen. (laughs) With pleasure. Wilkes, first contact General McCormick and tell him everything we discussed. Tell him what we decided. Yes, sir. Then I want you to ensure that the lifeguard holds steady. I don't want to hear about any other Roberts' breaking ranks. Absolutely. Dismissed. Dr. Megan, wait for me at the lab. I've got some business there after the vice consul and I plan our official statement to the UDZ. I'll await with bated breath. I think, Calhoun, we may just manage this yet. A guest bedroom in the Consular Palace. What's the meaning of this? I...
I just want to phone home and talk to my family. I'm sorry, sir. The interzonal line is down. We've got our people working on it now. Well, could I at least go somewhere they got a working phone? Apologies, Mr. President. But the nearest phone capable of putting you in touch with DZ-1 is at the consular capital, several blocks away. You need security en route, and we'd need direct authorization. What am I, a hostage? Are you telling me I have to ask your government's permission to use a phone? I'm afraid so, sir. This is absurd. What if DZ-1 had to reach me? What if there was an emergency? Then I'm sure the message would be relayed to you post-haste. Oh, that's reassuring. Again, sincere apologies. The line should be available to you shortly. Perhaps in a half an hour. Wonderful. Just wonderful. Is there anything else I could do for you, Mr. President? Could you please invite Ambassador Gorman to my room right away? I need to speak with him at once. I believe he has stepped out, sir. Stepped out? What in the hell do you mean? He wanted to explore the palace. I'm sure he'll return to his room eventually, and I'll direct him to you once he does. What? He just went on a stroll? Sightseeing? Yes, sir. It's one of the oldest buildings in LZ-1, after all. And far larger than the White House. Well, thanks so much for that trivia. But I have to exchange words with my ambassador. Would you mind tracking him down for me and sending him my way? I wouldn't know where to begin looking for him, sir. The consul's residence is immense. Oh, my, for God's sakes, what do they pay you for? Furnishing excuses as necessary? If you are dissatisfied, Mr. President... Perhaps I could put you in touch with the consul or the vice consul so you can lodge your complaints. Frankly, I don't think I'd expect much better from them. All of this, it it ain't my idea of neighborly hospitality, I can tell you that much. You lot have been jerking me around since my first day here. I'm so sorry you feel that way, sir. Oh, I'm sure you are. I'll go find Gorman myself if you can't get off your ass and do Uh, it. No, no, Mr. President. I advise you to stay in your room for the time. And for what reason? The the floor is currently being cleaned. Oh, my goodness. Never in all my days have I ever seen such Uh, incompetence. Be patient, Mr. President. I'll go search for the ambassador. When I locate him, I'll escort him here straight away. Please, don't trouble yourself. No trouble at all, sir. If there's anything else you require, just give me a ring. I can't believe this. It's just bullshit. What the hell happened? These bastards. Oh, back so soon? What, do you want to make the bed now and clean up the bathroom? I think I'll pass, Knox. You? What are you doing here? The console sent me. Ah, uh-huh, good. I was starting to worry that I was going to be kept in the dark for the rest of the summit, cooped up in this little room. Well, what does Nathaniel have to say? Big news. The summit just ended. Excuse me? What? What is this? What? What's going on here? Mark Knox, I am placing you under arrest. You're the property of the lifeguard now. Yo... You're arresting me. I... What is... What's the... On whose orders? Take a guess. And on what charges? Regale me. Treason. (laughs) Treason? Is, is, Is that a joke? Treason against the United States of America, to which the United Living Zones is the one rightful successor. I'm... I am the president. You're an enemy of the state. Oh, my God. What have I done? You fucked up, Knox. And for the last time. You're right about that, I'm afraid. And the dead zones will never, never forget it, nor will they ever forgive me. Wishful buffoon I've been, I... I only ever wanted peace, just wanted the living and the dead to put aside their enmities and and their differences, to serve their mutual interests, the common good, to lift each other up, to to be united. And in the pursuit of that, I suppose I was ready to believe anything, any kind words and friendly assurance. 
go to any length, shake any hand that was extended in my direction. And that, that's where I went wrong. That's where I was lost. I, I thought paradise was in reach, that I, it could be attained so easily, that it could be bought so cheap. I was happy to make any sacrifice, push every doubt from my mind, dismiss the concerns of my advisors, my own generals, pay any price. And now I pay the ultimate price for my righteous blindness. Now my family pays the ultimate price and my people. God help them and God forgive me. I was blind, but now I see. Go on. Take me away. That wraps up part three of the four-part Gen Z season finale. If you're looking forward to a second season, please consider contributing to Chronosphere Fiction at patreon.com slash chronosphere. And here's your cast. Samantha is Deborah Crystalball, Mrs. Cooper and Hotel Room Service was Kathy Lieberman. Nick is Joey Ochoa. Leanne is Dr. Michelle Booz. Mayor Schumacher is Harrison Derbyshire. Captain Richard Roberts is Zachary Machias. Lieutenant Ramsey and Dr. Megan are Sarah Golding. George Cooper is J. Dean Garcia. Consul Nathaniel is Blake Benlin. Assistant Consul Calhoun is Caitlin Curtis. General Wilkes is Bob Larson. Sheriff Dietz and Lars and production and sound design are Daniel French. Well wishes to you, Chronosphere passengers. Until next time, keep your cosmos clean. Not adjust your sets. You're tuned to Wednesday Wonders on the Mutual Audio Network. Tomorrow on Mutual is Thursday Thrillers, our roundup of action, adventure, mystery, crime drama, and thrillers, of course. Subscribe to the full Mutual Audio Network feed for every day of diverse audio tales. Or find the Thursday Thrillers feed in your favorite podcast players. The Mutual Audio Network. Listening and imagining together.